Hello, people. Hi, guys. Welcome to my live. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Hi, Andrea, Krista, Kung Fu Panda. Eh, you are third. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Messiela, Aisha, Tessie, Andre. Welcome, Nina. You're welcome. Egosa. I've not heard that name in a long time. Egosa. Whitney, how are you, darling? You're welcome to my live. I'm starting a bit late today because I'm operating on, on, uh, on US time. I'm in the US. <laughs> welcome to my live show. Hello from Canada. The Messy John. Welcome, welcome. Chibuke, good evening. I'm finally doing a live video in your own time. I realized that when I used to do all my videos when I'm in the UK, that you guys are always either at work or, you know, at school or driving. But I think maybe I'm catching a lot of people here in the US now. UK people will be preparing for bed now, Nigerian people. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. You're welcome. I want to talk about the Nigerian High Commission, London, here. So while I was here in the UK, uh, while I was here in, in the US, this video went viral by a Nigerian guy who went to the Nigerian High Commission and smashed up some cars. I think about five cars that he was smashed and there was a recording of it that was trending. Did you guys see it? Mikio Kere, good evening. Welcome. Thank you. Kung Fu Panda. Uche, hi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing a live video in your time zone. Whitney, Whitney yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that video went viral um, that the guy was smashing cars in the Nigerian High Commission in London because um, he apparently the story is that he went to the Nigerian High Commission. Hey, Zoomix, you're welcome. He went to the Nigerian High Commission and his passport was not ready or something like that. I don't know. Some of, some account of the story says that um, uh, he was late for his appointment and he didn't have the sleep for which to collect and things like that. So I don't know, maybe they didn't allow him in or something, something didn't go quite right with his appointment. So he went crazy and started breaking stuff and started damaging vehicles. And I think it was a couple of about five cars. Yeah, what he did was quite crazy. I did a post about it on my Instagram and I said that, you know, thank God he's been arrested because. Violence is never the answer, whatever the provocation is. I don't think there's any justification for his behavior. But I was quite surprised that he had a lot of sympathy. Yeah, Ellen, hi. Hello, BC, welcome. He had quite a lot of sy sympathy and a lot of people were saying that, you know, you know, whatever the, um, he did, uh, there's justification for it. Not justification for his action, but, you know, the provocation is always there when it comes to dealing with Nigeria high commissions abroad because of the way they treat people. You know, it had a, quite a lot of sympathy from people who were saying that, you know, they treat people in a very shitty way. So it's not everybody that can take the disappointment that they tend to give people because they never treat people well. Their customer service is zero. You guys know I had my experience with them last year when I went there. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you guys a funny story. Do you know since when I went there, I went to Nigeria in May last year, 2018, and I went, I went to Nigeria High Commission around, was it around um, March? Yeah, I think it was around March that I went there. I didn't go back. I did the application online. I submitted it. I paid my fees uh, for my new passport. But after everything, when I went to Nigeria and came back, especially with everything that happened in Nigeria, I kid you not, I never went back. I just left it for them. They should keep it. They should keep their passports. I don't want. So <laughs> I just left it there. I said, I can't be bothered. I'm not going to bother myself because those people, they can stress the life out of you. Yeah, I'm good. I'm Arachi, my love. Kunle, hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, Kunle, I see what you're saying, that sympathy for causing criminal law. Now the fool has a criminal record. To be honest, I think that guy will probably have a criminal record before now because it, it's not, uh, it takes a lot for an average person like you and I to go and be breaking cars. He didn't break one, he didn't break two, he didn't break three, five. And the story also said that he apparently went to another embassy. I think it was Belgian embassy or one other embassy like that. 
that he started his wahala from. So looking at that guy, he seems like somebody who is uh, a troublemaker. He must have probably have a, a criminal record because if you are somebody who has a job, you're a professional, you have a career, you think twice before, you know, getting into that kind of situation whereby you not only have, you're not going to only have a criminal record, but you probably be sent to jail for criminal damage. Uh, but you know the laws in the UK are quite last. So, mm. Chibuke, you said that you don't, um, you don't condone what he did. Um, he wouldn't have done that, what he did at Nigerian embassies abroad. But they treat us like peasants. Yeah. You will cut him some slack. I think a lot of people did cut him some slack, which I was quite surprised that, uh, you know, I think it's based on your experience. Because as I last year, when I went there, I thought, okay, I had a lot of good stuff. And they said, oh, they've changed. They are not rude to, to, to customers anymore. They treat people well now. They have good toilet facilities. They are, you know, they will smile at you and say hello. They are not rude to you. They are not insultive and things. They were all the things that they used to do, that they behave like, I don't even know how to describe them because their behavior was zero before. You know, this is what I always say to people. It is Nigerians that work. Nigerian civil servants are the work that are the ones that work in Nigeria high high commissions all over the world. Both the one in New York, the one in Toronto, the one in London, all over the world. It is Nigerian civil servants. So if it's the same Nigerian civil servants that we know the way they behave back in Nigeria, why why I mean why are you going to think that they're going to act any different? They're not going to act any different. Yeah. Original Delta say Nigerian embassies everywhere is ridiculous. The one in Atlanta is like a market, and the employers behave like they are. They are last. <laughs> they be like they are last ma. Yeah, they are like that. It's a pity. Yeah, people always say that is the government that is the problem in Nigeria. Charity, hi, hello from New York. <laughs> it is not only the politicians. You guys always say that it's not only the politicians that are the problem. Civil servants, hey Nayo, how are you? Civil servants are a big big problem in Nigeria. In fact, I, I tell you guys that the corruption in the Nigerian civil service is worse than that of the politicians. I worked in the civil service for six years, yeah? So I know what I'm talking about. The Nigerian civil service is so corrupt, it is rotten to, to the core, from the permanent secretary to the clerk. You know the clerk, or even the no clerk is too high. Gates man, the gate man at the door when you go to the ministry. The gates man there, do you know those people that will open the door for you to go in? They will collect bribe. They will decide whether they want to let you in or not. They are so rude. They are so disrespectful. So what do you expect? How do you expect them to behave any differently when they come abroad? Because they don't have the orientation. They don't have the training. And now this is very, very shocking. I'm sure you guys have seen the, the title when I said exposing them. This is why I came to find out not too long ago. Do you guys know that the Nigerian High Commission in London, they have a racket going on there? Yeah. It is so sad. It is shameful, but it's true. They have a racket going on there whereby the Nigerian civil servants that are working in the Nigerian, uh, Nigerian High Commission in London, they, will, they, are, they, they, they are, oh my God. They work with all these touts, yeah, who hang around the embassy, yeah. Good afternoon, Kunle, you're welcome. They will work with them in a way that if you are going to the Nigerian High Commission in London, you will see them hanging around, they will be calling you. You know how they do all those touts like the ones that are in Nigeria. They will be calling you, what do you want to do? Do you want to do passports? I can help you get it tomorrow. I can help you get it next week. So... Their own is that you pay them a bit more, you pay them a commission, yeah, and then I'm telling you, you can either get your passport that day or the next day. Whereas you that will travel all the way from maybe Birmingham or you come from uh, another island or wherever you are in the UK and you come to, to London to go and get your passport, they will tell you that your appointment is in three months' time. This is no joke. This is what they do. So... And they have other agents elsewhere. They actually have agents. I know one of them that is an agent. This person is always doing passport application. He does passport application for people. And he can get your appointment today or tomorrow. You go there. You pay him. And because he's working with the civil servants in the high commission, then you can go in and get your, your passport the next day for a commission. So people who don't want to, who don't want to go and go through the 
all the lineup and all the insults that they will put you through there, we'll pay them and go. I'm telling you, they have agents that are working with civil servants. So you see why they, their, their passport cannot be ready on time. You see why somebody will apply, apply for passport and it will take them months. It will take them months before the passport, before they, they will tell you that you should come, that there's no appointment, that there's an there's a, a appointment in three or four months time. But if you are paying an agent who is working with the crooked civil servants in that place, they will give you an appointment the next day. Eh? Chibuke say I had the worst experience at Atlanta and New York offices. Currently, my passport is expired. I'll be traveling to Nigeria with a visa. Me too. Me too, Chibuke. is exactly the same thing I'm doing. You know what? Hmm, forget it. I have no plans to go to Nigeria High Commission. I have no plan to renew my Nigerian passport. I don't want. Let them take. I don't want anymore. Shortly before I came to the to the US, I renewed my, my, my UK passport. And oh my God, I don't know the day Nigeria will get to this level. Do you know what? It is so easy. You do the application online. You pay the fee online. Then they have centers where you can even go and take passports. It's not, my, it's not their own centers or places like Tesco, which is just like a supermarket. You get there and then you take a passport. They'll give you a code. And they will check that the passport meets the specification of, you know, of the uh, uh, of uh, of uh, the passport office, which is a uh, uh, what do they call them now? Uh, home office. Hmm? Somebody said they need deliverance. <laughs> we in Nigeria and diaspora are the cause of the misbehavior. Sometimes, why should some individuals give give them bribe just to get an appointment? When well, you don't want to be frustrated, Unko, you don't. I don't. I don't know whether I want to blame the people that are paying them bribes because. Sometimes you have an urgent thing that you need to do immediately in Nigeria. And they'll tell you that there's no appointment. You come back in six months. What do you do? If somebody approach you and say, give me 50, 50 pounds and I will get your pass for you, the, for you the next day, you will pay it now. You will pay it. So that is just it. So I paid, I went and took my passport uh, photograph and then um, they have a code they will give you. Once you are doing your application, they will ask you, do you have a code? Because they have, you know, the people that take the passport can link to their website whereby they can give you a code when you are doing your application online. You just put it there and that's it. Do you know what? Automatically, your passport will be loaded into the home office uh, website and that was it. All I had to do, I paid the fee. They said, okay, send your, uh, your old passport by post. I didn't even register it. I just sent it by post, but I paid for register delivery for, for, for the return of my passport. And that was it. Under 10 days, I got my new passport back. So if I can do it so easily online for passport, I even have more, 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 more strength, more power. What am I doing with their rubbish Nigerian passport that I want to go and... <laughs> we should not provoke me. <laughs> I'm on holidays. I'm in New York. You can see I'm looking very fresh. And alas, I don't want to provoke this, this evening. <laughs> What am I doing with your good for nothing rubbish passport that when you get to any border, they, they will look at it once they see it's green and be turning it around and they will treat you like a, like a common crook because of all the havoc that, Niger that some Nigerians are causing everywhere. What am I doing with your useless passport? So I beg, Chibuke, I'm with you. Let them hold their passport. I don't want any more. I am a Nigeria by blood. Nothing will ever change that. Or that I choose not to be a Nigeria when it comes to nationality. Yes, I have chosen to be a Nigeria, na <laughs> Nigeria by blood, but my nationality is British. I like it like that because it makes my life so much easier. Yeah. So any day, if I sum up the courage to go to Nigeria, because I don't know if I want to go because I have palpitations about going to Nigeria. I have anxiety about it. I was having panic, panic attacks the last time I went. No joke. Because of my experience, I'm not saying that people shouldn't go. You know, people can go. Anybody can go. It's, it's not like anybody that goes, something bad is going to happen to them. But my own personal experience, I had the last time. Since then, I've been having panic attacks about going to Nigeria. So if I choose to go someday, I want to go. I will go and apply for visa. Mm -hmm. Dama, if you get to Nigeria, whether it's Lagos, Abuja, you are going to. The queue of the people with uh, foreign visa is very short. Whereby <laughs> the queue of Nigeria is long, very long. <laughs> so why should I bother myself with their useless passports? Why should I bother myself with, with it? I will cuckoo go as British so that they will respect me because they respect foreigners more than their own people. What time alone? I'm okay with it. 
I, I, I'm so okay with it. <laughs> I can't be bothered with them anymore. Let me give you, give you guys a gist what happened when I was coming to the US at JFK. I flew from London Heathrow to JFK. And of course, now when you come to a, any foreign country, I'm not a British, uh, a, 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 an American citizen. So you can imagine that the queue for American citizen is non existent. There's no queue. It's wide open like this. All you have to do, once you have green card, eh? <laughs> once you have green card, all you have to do is just, mm, just march to the front. And they will see you immediately. You see how they respect? You see how Americans respect their own citizen? You see, it is the same thing in the UK. Once you have EU passports or you have British passports, ah, no queue, just march straight to the front. They will have the electronic gates that you just scan yourself. Boom, boom, boom. Two minutes, you are in. So I got to JFK. And the queue of America is non-existent, or people who have American citizenship and green card is non-existent. But those of us who are non-Americans, other passports, <laughs> you guys know the one they call other passports. <laughs> the queue for other passports, eh? oh my God. It was, there are over five, no kidding, guys. It was over 5,000 people waiting. And then they were walking up and down. Any American citizen? Any American citizen? <laughs> Do you have a green card? You have a, I, I can't look the. <laughs> I can't look the, the the official one of the staff that works there. Say, I don't have American citizen, but I will fake here. If you people don't let me go to the front, she said, "Ma'am, she said, ma'am, I'm sorry, I can't help you. You have to stay on the queue." I say, "Me, as I'm here, so I'm not well. You see me, I'm, I'm as I'm here, so I'm not well. Please, uh, make me America for one day." <laughs> Just make me an American citizen for one day. What I'm trying to get out of it is that every other country, they treat their own people well. They treat their own citizen with respect, with dignity. Only Nigerians treat their uh, foreigners better than they treat their own citizen. So you are in Nigeria and after you suffer to go to Washington or Atlanta or New York, for those of you that live in the U.S. here, to go and renew your passport, then you will still get to Nigeria. They will put you in one long, miserable queue. And then when you get there, they will say, hey, welcome. Then they will start opening your passport and checking what I don't know. What are they checking for? I don't know. They will start checking. And they will start asking you stupid questions that have no bearing to anything. And when was the last time? When did you travel? And you tell them, you tell them, I don't live in Nigeria. I live abroad. Every Nigeria does not live in Nigeria. I live... <laughs> <laughs> I live in, in Britain. I'm British. I'm British. <laughs> if you tell them that one, eh, be ready to sleep there that day. They will not allow you go. <laughs> they will frustrate you for leaving them in that country without light. All the Nepal frustration, they will put you on you. <laughs> they will put it on you that day. They will not allow you to go. They will ask. They will frustrate you. <laughs> oh my God. It's like they're angry with you for leaving them in Nigeria and going somewhere, especially if God bless you, you have the citizenship of that country. So all of you that have the foreign passports, you better hide it. <laughs> when you get there, otherwise, they will make your life miserable. Zooming say, I went to renew my passport in 2015 in New York office. I had a lot of negative feedback. I followed the process. I went to the office, took my picture, and the passport was ready in within an hour. Ah, that's good, though. Maybe I should go there. Ah, if I knew I would have come to apply in the in the New York, <laughs> in New York office, though, it, it must be better than this London one. Because at the point, someone told me that London um, High Commission, they are making changes. And true, true, when I went last year, I did a video about it, and I was telling you guys that, okay, at least they are not so rude anymore. They will greet you, you know, they, it's orderly. It seems to be orderly. But still, the waiting period is so long, you would think they are doing passport for every Nigeria in the diaspora. And the reason why the passport is taking so long to do is because of the rackets. The rackets that they have going there. Can you imagine that civil servants in Nigeria Health Commission in London are conniving with agents to be doing passport business on the side? Whereby people who just want to walk in, apply for this uh, for passport and get their passport cannot get appointments. You know why you cannot get appointment for three three months? It's because the agents are busy getting the appointment. One of the agents told me that if I want passport tomorrow, I can get it, but I will have to pay him. Yes. And if you go there, you will see some of them hanging around. Touts! How can somebody come from Nigeria and come and do touts in London? 
Eh? You guys tell me what kind of olori buruku will make somebody come all the way from Nigeria. And the only work you can do in your life is to be a tout in the UK. You stand and be doing touts. Ah, see, eh? I think it's in the blood. Now I know that this touting, <laughs> this touting is in the blood, though. Otherwise, I don't know how of all the jobs in the UK, even if you don't have paper, it's for you to go and stand outside Nigeria Commission and be saying. You see somebody going, you say, you want to do passport? Eh? What do you want to do? Okay, 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 okay. I will help you. If they will not have succeeded, you know the person, person, people I will blame is the people that work in the embassy. Because if the people, the civil servants that work there, do not cooperate with them, there's no way that they would have been able to do that business. It's because they are doing it together and sharing the profit. You see how criminal civil servants are? You see how Nigerians behave? Later, they will come and be accusing politicians of one thing or the other. Eh? Mrs. Uh, John says, Rome is worse. Is the worst embassy is Roma. They don't have respect for anybody. Somebody told me that the one in Italy, I think it's that one in Rome, that the toilet, eh, you can just die when you go inside or you carry one disease that you will take, you will need uh, a specialist doctor to cure you because of how dirty their toilets are. Mm? I just say corruption has consumed their minds and so God punish the devil. Eh? Uh -huh. You see, somebody has confirmed what I'm saying. Jenna said I used an agent when I wanted to renew. See, that's to tell you that this is, I know exactly what I'm saying. The reason why you cannot get your passport on time in the UK and uh, in London is because they have agents. Ah, I can't believe it. Eh? Chibuke said, you're absolutely right, Bridget. They do the same racket sharing in America. My older brother went to renew his passport in Atlanta early this year, and he got the worst experience ever in Atlanta. Hi. I mean, what, what, who did this to us? Who did this to Nigeria? Why is it that everything about Nigeria is it? Is it? I, I'm beginning to. I, I, I'm beginning to wonder that it's just the way it is made is that God has just destiny that anything that has to do with Nigeria, once they put that end there, eh, they must frustrate your life. It has to come with suffering, with pain, one discomfort or the other. It's not possible for you to just do and just do something straightforward ask me why they cannot do that online if you already have a passport if they even tell me that okay it's only the new passport let's say you are not nigerian or your children who are not born in nigeria want their passport then they want to see proof that their parents are nigerians then they can say okay let's give you appointment to come why do i need appointment for me to to leave whatever i'm doing and book appointment to come to that useless smelling house to come and see you people and then you will come and tell me that i should come three months time how many times do I need to be running that route? I will first of all do the application. I will go. They will say, uh, pay. You pay the fees online or whatever, wherever you pay it. Then they will now tell you, take the pic. You come and take the picture. Then you have to take another day off work again to go there because you want to collect. What stops them from using postal system? You, look, Royal Mail works very well. Those of you who live in the UK know Royal Mail. It works. There are so many courier services they can use. So say, if you want to renew your passport, all you have to do, fill the application form, send us your old passport, pay the fees, and we'll return it by courier. Or you come and take the picture or whatever, send your old picture. Or I don't know. Why do they need me to come to their office to take a picture? Is it not passport? They used to do it. When I send a passport that meets meet their specification, why can't I just send it to you by post? So you send me my passport. Why do I need to go through that headache? To come to your office, eh? And when you reach there, you should see their attitude. Oh, Jesus. All those civil servants, I don't know whether they owe them salary. Or I, I'm thinking maybe they don't pay them salary. That's why. Eh? Kune said, my dad lived in the UK in the 70s. And I remember him saying how incompetent 40 years ago they were. Since he left the, 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 the UK, Nigeria High Commission was incompetent 40 years ago. Until today, they are still incompetent. No change. Hi. I've never seen anything like this before. So, and now, you know, I see why a lot of people, a lot of you guys are on my Instagram page, had sympathy for that guy who was smashing the cars. He was smashing the cars. They said, you know, even the way they would talk to you is the attitude, the customer service. I went to one store here in New York yesterday, and now it's like I shouldn't go out again. The way they were treating me, the way they were just talking to me with so much respect. Oh, can I help you, ma'am? Can I do this, ma'am? Oh, have a good day. They will greet you, eh? Even if you don't want to spend money in that store, you spend money. They will smile at you. Oh, can I? They see you just standing. They will walk up to you and say, "Can I help you?" You know, they offer their services. This is customer service. When are we going to learn this? When are we going to learn this? 
I don't understand. I don't, I don't, I don't just understand Nigeria. Eh? I beg, I beg. Anytime I'm talking Nigerian, but I'm always stressed. It stresses me. It just stresses me because I am tired of their wala. Eh? You renew your passport, via, via, your, your US passport via mail too. Yes, Zoomix, you are saying. Yeah, Messi is a really frustrating. They like frustrating people. France, they are like that too. <sighs> okay, so of all the stories you are hearing, I think the only place somebody has even given a positive feedback is New York. They say Atlanta is well. Italy is, is the same. Uh, France is the same. Eh? Today, say, I got a question, and to be. Do they return the old passport after renewal for, or do they, they, they return it? Uh, do they ret uh, return it with you with the renewed passport? If it's British passport, yes, they will return the old passport. They don't keep it. Even with Nigerian passport, they never keep your old passport. Every old passport is returned to you. You just need to send it to them for verification or whatever they need it for, and then they'll send it back. It's so simple. It was so stressless. I was like, oh my god, why can't I just do my Nigerian passport like this? Why? Why does my own country have to frustrate my life? Why? Why is it so hard? Eh? Simply the best. Say eh? the customer service is so appalling, and all you get is frustration, frustration, <laughs> nothing but frustration. Eh? Frustration upon frustration. Eh? Berlin is good too. Germany in Berlin. Your cousin did his passport in Atlanta, a bribe with fifty dollars. Can you imagine? So you guys can see that this racketeering is everywhere now. It's everywhere. Eh? The one in Canada, is, um, you're amazed that they could renew passports. Do they do it online? Let me see. Grace says, I must give it to the Nigeria High Commission in Canada. I was amazed that they could renew passport the same day that you do your capture. You just have to wait a couple of hours. Well, that's what they said though, when I went to Nigeria High Commission in London last year. Uh, this is what they said to me that you can renew same day. Eh? Who you said Madrid is a bit better with services? When Bianca Ojuku was there, she really made changes. Well, I hope they remain the same. That's the thing with them. You know, they, they, anything that is a good structure, they will not maintain it. Hmm? Paul says all the blame is on the High Commissioner because they are all politicians. They just come to make money, money after money. After their tenure, they go back to Nigeria. Yeah, that's another thing they used to view Nigerian High Commissions worldwide. It's all of them to appoint serving civil servants who have careers, who are diplomats that have careers in a, in a, in diplomatic service. They won't do. Mm -mm. They will never employ employ people who have, who have the experience. What they do is that they put politicians. They will put politicians because they use it to bribe politicians when they get into office. They were appoint their own. Those people have zero experience about what it is to run offices like that. They have no experience at all. So how would they? How would they not mess up? Until appointment in Nigeria is not is, is based on merit and not on godfatherism or who you know or political parties and all those nonsense that they do over there. That is actually people who are competent to do the job. Have you guys ever met met any of your ambassador before? <laughs> Has any of you, I have 322, 26 people online, has any of you ever met your ambassador to your country before? I saw one the other day. I think it was the US one. I'm not sure which of the consulates it is, but I think it's the US. The man was using walking stick like this. The man is so old. I think he's almost 90. I don't know whether you guys saw that video. He was using walking stick. They were holding him like this. I don't know whether you guys saw. Eh? Yeah, they employ they employ it through connection. The staff are civil servants, but the ambassador role, which is the high commissioner role, is by is a political appointment, and they will now have their own uh, staff that they have to bring with them. This is what they do. If you see that man, the man is so old. I say, oh my god, this is an ambassador. Oh, no wonder Nigerians use the vest. You know, rest of us now Nigerians use the vest, eh? Because there's nobody that is 40, 50, 60 that they can appoint. He has to be 70 and above. He's 70 years and above that the people that are ruling Nigeria and the people that are spoiling Nigeria and the people that are still ruling till tomorrow and they will still go to the High Commission all over the world and be doing non incompetent fools that they, all their best years are way behind them. They've used their life. They've finished their life. Their grandchildren should be the ones that are in position. No, they will not go. They will stay there. They want to die there. All of them want to die there. All those people. I'm telling you. 
They want to die there. I saw the Nigerian High Commission co uh, commissioner. The uh, I say, the man was using walking stick like they, they were holding his hand. I say, hey, we are finished. Nigeria is finished. Eh? I just says anybody won't go to Nigeria I, I embassy come out <laughs> with their passport renewal is like escaping hellfire. Eh? Is that fire? <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's been arrested now. He, he's definitely been arrested. So he has to face the law of the land. You know, this is not Nigeria. UK is not Nigeria where you just will go and smash cars and go, go away. If you are a thug, you behave like a thug. They will treat you like a thug. They will treat you like a criminal. <sighs> so definitely, sorry. I have a bit of flu. They will treat him like a common crook, that, 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 that a criminal. And, you know, he'll be locked up and try to court. Definitely. Eh? Somebody else is saying that Berlin is a horror trip. Ah, somebody else has told us already that Berlin is good, though. Nigeria Embassy in New York didn't pay light B. <laughs> they cut off most of their lights all the time. Kenny! <laughs> ah, don't die. Oh, my God. They don't pay light B. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, oh, all the money for the passport that they are collecting, what are they doing with it? Eh? They are waiting for Buari to send them money. That one will not send them money. Oh. Eh? They, 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 they will wait for a very long time. Eh? The Minister of Foreign Affairs is supposed to checkmate all these SSCs. I don't just get it. But you've forgotten, Paul, you've forgotten that even the minister... It's a political appointment. He was appointed by the whoever, maybe the sitting president or the last one, I don't know. Ministers are all appointed. Is, uh, these are what we are saying. They are all favors. If you're an APC or PDP, they want to console you. They will take this, take this from this party, take this, take this, and just they will hand them over to them or you know, from the state to say, okay, this is what we'll give this godfather. Everybody has their list, all them Tinubu and uh, uh, Baba. Toba Sanjo and all the other godfathers in Nigeria, they all have their list that if they supported you and you won an election, hmm, then you have to give them posts. And this is what they do. Free occupied uh, Biafra, they, they, they can lock him up, but it's a shame. Nigeria is... Uh, let me try and catch that. They will definitely lock him up and charge him to court. Unfortunately, because this is not Nigeria... He said they can lock him up, but it's a shame Nigerian embassy treats his own citizen like animals, even abroad. Yeah, it's Nigerians that are there. So definitely, you don't expect anything, anything better. Yeah, it's sad, but that's the reality of it. It's just the reality. I had a nice experience in Berlin last year. I got my passport. And the same day, I went to renew and the fresh passport for my kids. That's good. The Nigerian embassies in Atlanta and Washington are also horrible. Free occupied Biafra is saying, hmm. Simply the best says, they only make provision for able bodied uh, people. <laughs> disabled care. Yusuf, why are you talking like this? Disabled. Do they not recognize any disabled person in Nigeria? Have you ever seen any Nigerian road where they have disabled entrance or they have disabled door or they have anything disabled? If you are disabled in Nigeria, you all, you all know. Yeah, who is going to look at that? Nobody cares about that. Mm. Nobody really cares about that. So, yeah, that is Nigeria High Commission for you. Yeah, this is just the racket they are running. I didn't know that they run it all over here, too. It's sad and it's shameful. It is really, really disgraceful. Chelsea Brown said, I renewed my passport last year. I live in Cyprus. No Nigeria embassy here, but Nigeria embassy in Turkey is in charge. They come every three months and we pay online before they arrive and they were polite. Oh, that's good, though. Thank God for the ones that are doing the good work. We thank God for the ones that are doing the good work. But this one in London, hmm, it's taking a very, very long time. And they still don't get their, their they, they, they don't get their act together. It's very, very disgraceful. Anyway, we're gonna leave it here today. And yeah, I'm still in the US. And then um, on Saturday, I just want to remind you guys that I, I'm meeting up with, if you live in, the, in in New York City, come out and meet me. <laughs> you see, I'm speaking like Americano now. I'm not speaking British English anymore. I, I, am, I am a temporary American. 
I am a temporary American now. So on Saturday, that's how they call you on Saturday. <laughs> Come out and meet me on Saturday. Oh. <laughs> we are meeting at Sylvia's restaurant. Some people are still asking me where Sylvia's is. How, how can you people behave like this? You live in this country. You don't know where Sylvia's Even if you don't know, put it on Google. It will give you the address where to go. I am told that um, the address is 328 Malcolm X, Malcolm X Boulevard. That's where it is. Malcolm X, 328 Malcolm X Boulevard, is the corner of 127 Street and Lenox Avenue. That's between 126 and 127 Streets, but at the corner of 127 Street at Lenox Avenue. So Google is your friend. If you want to come, <laughs> if you want to come, <laughs> Google is your friend. Zoomix, you coming to New York City? You coming to see me on Saturday? If I don't see you, eh? <laughs> don't greet me again if I go back <laughs> if I go back to London I'm not going to talk to you again so are you in uh, New York come on let's hang out let's talk let's gist and rub mine then the New Jersey one the address has changed so if you live in New Jersey you want to come out and meet me I'm going to be in New Jersey on Sunday that's 23rd and the address is the restaurant is called Havana Central Havana Central Restaurant and Bar Havana Central Restaurant and Bar. I'm going to write it here. And it's 55 Pistonage Road. Havana Restaurant and Bar. So you can Google it. Havana. You no, know, like Havana. The country. Havana Restaurants. Restaurant and Bar. That's where I'm going to be. On Sunday. So yeah, if you live in New Jersey, don't say, ah, but don't you, but you came, oh. You didn't see us, so. Come out, oh, let's hang out. I'm going to be here till next week. So let's um, let's come out and hang out and have fun and talk and laugh and have a nice meal and then get to know one another. Yeah? Okay. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. I hope you guys have had a wonderful time. I finished ranting. It's, it's impossible to talk about Nigeria and no rants. I try not to. Eh? Somebody is giving directions. Zoomix, my darling, is giving directions. Say, take train two and three train and stop at 125th Street. See? New Yorkers, you people, you know your way around, though. Eh? And why not they blow horn too much? <laughs> Before I go, I need to talk about this horn. I beg. Now, Lagos, we did. Why not they blow horn too much for New York? Where I come from, we know they blow horn. We know they disturb the queen. We have the queen. So it is it's against the law for you to be blowing your horn. Now for Lagos, they use horn the green Nigeria, they use horn the green. Papa, good morning. The other person go say, Papa, 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 Papa. I go say, How are you? The other person go say, Papa, 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 Papa. Did you sleep well? <laughs> New Yorkers are like that, so very busy New York. <laughs> All of them are they rush. Now they rush. Now anyhow, yesterday I went to Mahata and went to a couple of shops down there in downtown. Oh my god. This place is busy. I will never complain about London anymore. It's not my first time in coming to New York. This is about my third time. But I'm not really taking time to tour New York. So tomorrow and in the next couple of days, I'm just going to go around tour, do a bit of vlogging, and see how it goes. Yeah. New York is driving equivalent to driving in Oshodi. Oh, it's like, oh. <laughs> New York is a crazy city. Oh, my God. Those of you that, that stay here, I give you a hand. When I try you, Jesus. Anyway, I'll catch you guys soon. Come out on Saturday and Sunday, Havana restaurants and bar. And then, yeah, we'll hang out. Thank you very much for joining me. Mwah! I love you guys. Bye. Have a good evening. And for those of you in Nigeria and the UK, good night, yo. Good night. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.